But let us just recap what we have been talking about. Men lad os alligevel lige samle op på hvad vi har talt om indtil videre. So the first week, så so første uge, I spoke about the first step when it comes to being transformed. Talte jeg om det første skridt når det kommer til at blive forvandlet. And that is to change your mindset. Og det er at ændre dit mindset. Because if we want to change, for hvis vi ønsker at ændre, we cannot focus on our own strength. Så kan vi ikke fokusere på vores egen styrke. We need to focus on Christ's strength. Så bliver vi nødt til at fokusere på Kristus' styrke. For some of you, for nogle af jer, change happens immediately. Så sker forandring med det samme. You have prayed to God to break your addiction. I har bedt Gud om at bryde jeres afhængighed. And boom, og sådan der, you were free from addiction. Så I sat fri. But for most of us, men for de fleste af, I would say the majority of us, største delen af os, vi har sige, God doesn't fix us just like this. Så fixer Gud os ikke sådan her. It's not all on God. Det er ikke kun handler om Gud. And it's not all on me. Og det er ikke kun afhængigt af dig. No, we say that it's God through me. Men vi siger at det er Gud gennem mig. So I need God's power. Jeg har brug for Guds kraft. To help me change. Til at hjælpe mig med at forandre mig. Last week, sidste uge. My wife, min kone, she had a great sermon. Havde da en skøn prædiken. Oh yeah, show her some love. Ja, vis noget kærlighed. And she did something I've never tried. Og hun gjorde noget jeg aldrig har she prøvet. She was both preaching and singing. Hun både prædikede og sang. It's simply the best. Mm, 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 mm. Exactly, she was Lige singing. Præcis. Hun sang. And then and she was also saying some great things. Og hun sagde også nogle skønne ting. And she said if you want to find out who you are. Og hvis du vil finde ud af hvem du er, sagde hun. You need to find out who God is. Så bliver du nødt til at finde ud af hvem Gud er. Because he has created you. For han har skabt dig. And today. Og i dag. We are on week number three. Så er vi i tredje uge. And today we are going to talk about. Og i dag der skal vi tale om how we can move from just hoping to change. Hvordan vi kan gå fra at ikke bare håbe på at forandre. Or andre, wanting to change. Eller ønsker for andre. And actually change. Men rent faktisk at forandre. And the way we do that. Og måden is to create happy habits in our life. Er via glade vaner i vores liv. Because the thing is, for det der er. That's a big smile. Det er et stort smil. I don't want this to be heavy for you. Ja, det skal ikke. But you know, we all know that in the end of the day, vi ved godt til syvende og sidst, that we shape our habits. Så det er os der former vores vaner. And then our habits. Og så former vores vaner us. Us. So if you want to change an area in your life, så ønsker du at forandre noget i dit liv. Change your habits. Forandre dine vaner. Because if you change your habits, ændrer du dem, you will change your life. Så ændrer du dig. If I should be personal, hvis jeg skal være personlig, the number one thing that has changed my life, det på aller øverste liste der ændrer mit liv, is creating spiritual habits. Er at skabe åndelige vaner, and then hold on to them, og så holde fast i dem, over time, over tid. I will get back to that soon. Det kommer jeg snart tilbage til. But first, men først. Last week, sidst uge, I had so much fun. Der havde jeg det skægt. Because I took my yellow preacher's bus. For jeg tog min pangule præstebus. Yes. Ja. Yeah. I go electric, baby. Jeg er elektrisk. So I took it. Jeg tog den. On a road trip all the way to Jylland, Jotland. Til en tur helt over til Jylland. And to visit some pastors' colleagues. Og besøge nogle præstekollegaer. And their churches. Og deres kirker. And I think we have a map. Jeg tror også vi har et kort. Of the places that I visited. De steder jeg tog hen. So I went to the beautiful city of Kolding. Så jeg tog til den smukke by Kolding. And then I went all the way to Vejle. Til Vejle. Anyone from Vejle her? Nogen fra Vejle her? Yes. Good to see you. Velkommen. And then I took. And spent an afternoon in the great city of Herning. Så so tog jeg en skøn eftermiddag i Herning. We have some people from Herning. Nogen fra Herning. God bless you. It was great. Velsignet, det var skønt. And then I went to Randers. Så tog jeg til Randers. It's better than its repetition. Det er bedre end dets omdømme. It's really nice. Det er ret skønt. And then I went to Aalborg. Any Aalborg people here? Og så tog jeg til Aalborg. Nogen fra Aalborg her. And I just had two days. Jeg havde bare to dage. Hvor, I... ma- hvor mange gange oplevede du din bil? <laughs> We don't speak about that. Okay. <laughs> That's why it took two days. Okay. Okay. But anyway. It's like the 40 years in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only two week walk. 
<laughs> Anyways, so I spent some time with the local pastors. Så jag var sammen med prästerna där. Like Tove, Tove and uh, Dawn, Dan and others. Och all de stora. All de stora. They have so many names. De har så många, de heter så And I'm so good at names. Och jag är så god med namn. Pray for me, church. Pray for my kirke. Anyway, they are great people. De är goda människor. And it was so encouraging to meet them. Og det var opmuntrende at møde dem. Because in all of these five churches, for i alle de her fem kirker, the churches were growing. Så voksede kirkerne. And in three of these places, og tre af stederne, they were about to build new facilities. Så var de i gang med at bygge nye faciliteter. Or are planning to build new facilities. Eller vi planlægger at bygge nye faciliteter. To invest for the future and the next generation. For at investere i fremtiden og den næste generation. You see Kent there with a big smile. Kent er der med et stort smil. That's in Randers. I Randers. They're building a new big hall for 24 million. De bygger en ny stor sal til 24 millioner. And I was just so encouraged by their faith. Og deres tro opmuntrede mig. Because you know, the last two years here in our church in Copenhagen, for the last two years here in our church in Copenhagen, God has done amazing things. Har Gud gjort fantastiske ting. And we are so thankful for that. Og vi er meget taknemmelige. But you know what? Men ved I hvad? God is doing great things. Gud gør gode ting all over Denmark. Over hele Danmark. And it's just beautiful to see. Og det er smukt at se. From north to south. Fra nord til syd. From west to east. Fra vest til øst. New people is coming to faith. Kom af nye folk til tro. And I could just sense that the people of God. Og jeg kunne bare mærke at Guds folk the move. er klar. And you know what? Og ved I hvad? I don't think it's a coincidence that this happened at different churches and different places at the same time. Jeg tror ikke, det er tilfælde, at det her det sker på forskellige kirker på forskellige tider. I think this samtid. is a time for preparation. Jeg tror, det her det er en forberedelse. So nu. when revival comes to Denmark, så når vækkelsen kommer til Danmark, because revival will come one day. For k- vækkelsen kommer. And when revival comes, og når den kommer, we will be prepared. Så er vi forberedt. And we will be ready. Og klar. Can I get an international amen on that? International okay, amen. sure. Yeah, tak. So we are part of this great movement. So we are part of this great movement. And it's so beautiful. And it's so beautiful. Last week, Sistu, I had a conversation with a guy. So I had a conversation with a guy. And he asked me the question. He asked me this question. Eric, Eric, how can I be happy in my life? How can I be happy in my life? Have you ever thought about that question? Har I tænkt over det spørgsmål? How can I be happy? Hvordan kan jeg blive glad? You know, I don't think that for the first, I don't think that happiness in itself has a purpose. For det første så tror jeg ikke at glæde i sig selv er et formål. Because we can look for happiness in all different areas of our lives. Fordi vi kan lede efter glæde i alle mulige områder af vores liv. In our family life. I vores familie. In our career. I vores karriere. In our self-fulfillment. I vores selvopfyldelse. And we will find that we have the happiness for a short amount of time. At glæden er der et kort øjeblik. And then it's just like it slips away. Og så er det som om det glider væk. And I read this study. Og jeg læste et studie. In American sociological review. I den amerikanske sociologiske anmeldelse. And they had this study about what is common for happy people. Og de har lavet en forskning omkring hvad der gør sig gældende for glade mennesker. And it said that happy people are more active physically. Og de konkluderede at glade mennesker er aktive fysisk. They socialize more. De er mere sociale. And they are more generous to others. Og så er de mere gavmilde over for andre. It also says that they go to church more regular. They say faktisk også at de også går ofte i kirke. And they have sex more frequently. Og ofte har sex. I don't know if it was in that order though. Ikke nødvendigvis i den rækkefølge. But there is a few things that is common for happy people. Men der er en del ting der gør sig gældende for glade mennesker. But I would like to add. Men jeg vil gerne tilføje. For someone who wants to follow Christ. For nogen der ønsker at følge Kristus. Then happiness is rather a byproduct. Der er glæde snarere et biprodukt. It's more like a result. Et resultat snarere. Of good and holy habits in my life. Af gode og hellige vaner i mit liv. And that is why we today. Og det er derfor vi i dag talk about happy habits. Taler om glade vaner. And let me today show you. Og lad mig vise dig i dag. What the power of one good habit. Hvad kraften af én god vane kan gøre i dit liv. 
Turn to your neighbor on your left and say there is power in one good habit. Vend dig til naboen til venstre og sig der er kraft i én god vane. Turn to the neighbor on your right. Vend dig til den naboen til højre. You need to hear this sermon. Og sig du har brug for at høre den her Guds prædiken. So today we're looking at the book of Daniel. I dag der ser vi i Daniels bog chapter 6. Kapitel 6. And the story is this. Og historien er den her. That Daniel is a devoted servant of God. Daniel han er en hengiven tjener af Gud. And he's also doing career in the Babylonian government. Og har også en karriere i den babylonske regering. And the king Darius, og kong Darius, is so pleased with Daniel. Er svært tilfreds med Daniel. So pleased that his Daniel's colleagues, så tilfreds at Daniels kolleger, they get jealous. Bliver misundelige. And they want to get him out of their way. Og skal have ham ryddet so af vejen. So they have this sneaky plan. Så de har den her listige plan. That they propose to the king. Som de foreslår kongen. King. Konge. What if for 30 days? Hvad med at vi i 30 dage? No one is allowed. Ikke tillader nogen to pray to anyone. Til at bede til nogen som helst. No man. Ingen mand, no god, ingen gud, except you king. Ud over dig kongen. And the king? Og kongen. He's a bit flattered. Han er ret smiret. So he like, så han siger, mm, that's a pretty good idea. Ret god idé. They can only pray for me. Kun bede til, til mig. But the thing is, so he issued this decree. Han udsteder så den her ordre. But then we read about how Daniel. Men så læser vi om hvordan he continued to pray. Daniel fortsætter med at bede. Three times a day. Tre gange dagligt. Because that was his daily habit. Fordi det var hans daglige vane. And when his jealous colleagues find out. Og da hans jaloux kolleger så finder ud af det. They tell the king. Så fortæller de kongen det. And even if the king respects and loves Daniel. Og selvom kongen respekterer og elsker he Daniel. He feels obliged. Så er han bundet. To punish Daniel, er at straffe Daniel, because he has set this decree, fordi han har udstedt den her ordre. And the punishment is pretty tough. Og straffen er ret hård. You will be sent to a den full of hungry lions. Du bliver smidt ned i en hule fuld af løver. And hopefully you will survive the night. Forhåbentlig overlever du natten. So this is what takes place. Så der sker det her. At night they bring Daniel to the den. Om aften så tager de Daniel derud. And push him down. Og skubber ham ned. And the king goes home. Og kongen går hjem. But he has a tough time sleeping that night. Men han har meget svært ved at falde i søvn. Because he is so distressed. På grund af bekymring. And anxious over the safety for Daniel. Og angst over Daniels and sikkerhed. And should be. Og det burde han også være. So early in the morning. Så tidligt om morgenen. At dawn he runs to the den. Da solen står op så løber han ned til. And he shouts out. Og råber. Daniel, Daniel, are you alive? Lever du? Is some part of you alive? Noget er der levende. And to everyone's astonishment, og til alles forbløffelse, Daniel replies back. Så svarer Daniel. Yes, I'm fine. Ja, jeg har det fint. And then he says, og siger så, My God, min Gud, has rescued me. Har reddet mig. That's an international amen again. Et internationalt amen igen. The question is, spørgsmålet er, how did Daniel set himself apart? Hvordan adskilte Daniel sig? How did he have the faith? Hvordan havde han troen? To stare down lions. At nedstige løver. I think the answer is in verse 10. Jeg finder svaret i vers 10. Where it says like this. Hvor der står, three times a day. Tre gange dagligt. He got down on his knees and prayed. Knælede han og bad giving thanks to his god og han takkede gud just as he had done before præcis som yeah. han altid havde gjort you have this verse on your card det her vers det står også på jeres kort so daniel prayed så so daniel bad just as he had done before præcis som han altid havde gjort how did god do something so big through daniel hvordan gjorde gud noget så stort gennem daniel well the answer is svaret er God often does big things. Gud gør ofte store ting. As a result of som et resultat af really small habits. Meget små vaner. God often does big things. Gud gør ofte store ting. As a result som et resultat of really small habits. Af meget små vaner. It doesn't say in the text. Det står ikke i teksten. But I assume. Men jeg antager. That for Daniel. For Daniel. 
praying three times a day. Det er bede tre gange om week dag. after week, uge efter uge, year after year, år efter år. It has strengthened his faith. Det har styrket hans tro. It has given this closer spiritual relationship with God. Det her mere nære og styrket forhold til Gud. I assume praying three times a day. Jeg antager når man beder tre gange om dagen. Have given Daniel the courage. Har givet Daniel modet to stand firm og stå fast when others would have fall. Når andre vil falde. And you and I. Og du og jeg. We should never underestimate. Vi skal aldrig undervurdere what God can do in our life. Hvad Gud kan gøre i vores liv. Through just one simple habit. Gennem bare én enkelt vane. And listen to me today. Lyt efter. One habit. Én vane. In your daily routine. I din daglige rutine. Can change your relationship with Jesus. Kan ændre dit forhold til Jesus. One habit in your daily routine. Én vane i din daglige rutine. Can change the dynamic in your marriage. Kan ændre dynamikken i dit ægteskab. Why? Hvorfor? Because God often does big things. Fordi Gud ofte gør store ting. Through really small habits. Gennem meget små vaner. And maybe this week. Og måske den her uge. We should all do. Skal vi alle sammen. What Daniel did. Det gør, gør det If Daniel. you take out your postcard. Hvis du tager dit postkort. There is a challenge here. Så er der en udfordring. And that is to set your alarm on your phone. Og det er at sætte en alarm på din telefon. Three times a day this coming seven days. Tre gange i ugen den kommende uge. And pray. Og be. Lunch. Morgenmad. Morning, yes, and lunch and evening. Og middag og aftensmad. And just take one, or you can take two minutes as well. You can take et eller to minutter. And just thank Jesus for something. Og tak Jesus for noget. And then pray to Him. Og bed til ham. It only has to be a few minutes at a time. Det skal bare være få øjeblikke ad gangen. But I dare to promise you. Men jeg våger at love dig. If you do this for seven days in a row. Gør du det her syv dage i træk? Your intimacy will, with Jesus will grow. Så vil din intimitet med Jesus vokse. And your faith in him will grow as well. Sammen med din tro. And I just want you to know. Og jeg vil have at du skal vide. I never challenge you to do something. Jeg udfordrer dig aldrig til at gøre noget. That I haven't tried myself. Som jeg ikke selv har prøvet. So I did this challenge. Så jeg lavede den her udfordring. A couple of weeks ago. For et par uger siden. To try it out. For at prøve det. And one day I was I was on the metro train. Så var jeg så med metroen en af dagene. And it was fully packed. Den var fuldt pakket. And I was starting a conversation with a stranger next to me. Og jeg var midt i en samtale med en fremmed. And suddenly, og pludselig, my prayer alarm goes off. Så ringer min bønnealarm. And since I am a guy, og efter som jeg er en fyr, who like to follow through, som elsker at udføre det jeg har sat mig for. On, om det jeg har sat mig for. I had two options. Så havde jeg to muligheder. I could postpone the prayer. Jeg kunne udsætte bønnen. Or I could just tell the stranger. Eller jeg kunne fortælle den fremmede. Sorry. Undskyld. But I need to talk with my boss for a minute. Men jeg skal lige tale med chefen et øjeblik. What do you think I did? Hvad tror I jeg gjorde? Yes, as weird as it was. Lige så mærkeligt som det var. I told this stranger. Jeg sagde til den her fyr. Hey, I need to talk to God, but only for a minute. Undskyld, jeg bliver nødt til at tale med Gud bare et minut. Excuse me. Undskyld mig. And he said, okay. Og han sagde, okay. So I closed my eyes. Så jeg lukkede mine øjne. I prayed for a minute. Jeg bad i et minut. Opened my eyes. Åbnede mine øjne. And he was looking like this. Og han sad sådan her. And he asked. Og han spurgte så. What is God up to these days? Så hvad laver Gud de her dage? Try this as well. Oh dear. <laughs> Now, no. Let me tell you a few happy. What is habits. God up to these days? <laughs> Only good things. I was awaiting that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, take that one again. Brother. Yeah. Now we're going to go through some happy habits. Nu skal vi gennem nogle glade vaner. Happy habits. Glade vaner. That I think can change different areas in your life. Som jeg tror kan forandre forskellige områder i dit liv. And don't pick up on every one of these. Og tag endelig ikke dem alle. It can be too tough for you. Det bliver for meget. But when you listen to these habits, men når du lytter til de her vaner, pray to God. Så be til Gud. If there is one of these, og lad ham fortælle hvilken af dem, you will put dem, into your daily routine. Som du skal putte i din daglige rutine. Okay? Er det okay? Okay. Aftale. Okay. Not happy habit number one. Glad vane nummer et. Make healthy choices. Træf sunde valg. 
We know that we are body, vi ved vi er krop, mind, sind and soul og sjæl. So as Christians, så so som kristne, we don't only care for the soul, så so tager vi ikke kun vare på sjælen. We also care for the body, men også for kroppen. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6. Prøv at høre hvad Paulus han siger i 1. Korintherbrev kapitel 6. Don't you realize? Er I klar over? That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. At jeres krop er Helligåndens tempel. Who lives in you and was given to you by God. Som bor i jer og som er givet til jer fra Gud. For me personally. For mig personligt. To decide on a few healthy habits. Og sætte sig for nogle sunde vaner. And then deciding on doing them. Og så beslutte sig for. At the same time every day, at gøre dem på samme tid hver dag, helps me keeping them. Hjælper mig med at opretholde det. So every morning, så so hver morgen, when I wake up, når jeg vågner, I take a cup of coffee, så so tager jeg en kop kaffe, and then I have my personal time with God. Og så har jeg min personlige tid med Gud. I read some scripture, jeg læser skriften, I pray, jeg beder, and then I do journal. Og så laver jeg en journal. Every morning, hver morgen. And then directly after that, og lige efter det, I do my workout, så træner jeg. 30 minutes, 30 minutter. And straight after that, og lige efter det, I have my breakfast, så har jeg min morgenmad. Every morning, hver morgen, I eat oatmeal, så spiser jeg havregryn with milk, med mælk og blåbær. And blåbær. blueberries. If I'm a bit crazy one day, hvis jeg er lidt vild en dag, I take lingonberries. Så so tager okay nogle svenske bær. Yes. Ja. Yeah. <laughs> But I do that every morning. Men jeg gør det hver morgen. And every night. Og hver aften. I like to go to bed at the same time. Så so ynder jeg at gå i seng på samme tid. And every morning. Og vågne op. I like to walk up at the same time. På samme tid. Am I boring? Er jeg kedelig? Yes, your pastor yeah. is boring. Ja, jeres præst er kedelig. But by creating these habits, men ved at skabe de her vaner, and having them on the same time every day, og have dem på samme tid hver dag, it helps me in life. Så hjælper det mig i livet. To keep focus on what I think is important to me, med at fokusere på det jeg føler er vigtigt, and to keep focus on God, og fokus på Gud. You know, if I ever write a book, skriver jeg nogensinde en the bog, the title will be, så vil titlen være, how being boring, hvordan det at være kedelig, changed my life, ændrede mit liv. I don't think it's going to be a bestseller. Jeg tror ikke det bliver en bestseller. But that is my story. Men det er min historie. And of course all of our lives looks different. Og selvfølgelig ser alle vores liv forskellige ud. Some of you have small kids at home. Nogle af jer har små børn. Or you work irregular hours. Eller jeg arbejder på skæve tidspunkter. So you cannot have the same routines as I have. Og er dermed ikke i stand til at have de samme rutiner. But the main thing is not what your routines look like. Men hovedsagen er ikke hvordan jeres rutiner ser ud. The main thing is hovedsagen er that you need routines. At I har brug for rutiner. Because first we shape our habits. Fordi først så former vi vores vaner. And then our habits shapes us. Og så former vores vaner os. How many of you? Hvor mange af jer? Use your phone or your watch. Bruger jeres telefon eller jeres ur. Check up on how many steps you do in one day, making that one. For at holde tal på hvor mange skridt I tager på en dag. Anyone? Ah, I think there is more of you. Yes, now hands is coming up. I see you, sister. Jeg ser dig, søster. So, okay. Have you heard the great news? Så har I hørt de gode nyheder? They used to say that you need to take 10,000 steps a day. De plejede at sige at man skulle tage 10.000 skridt hver dag. To stay healthy. For at holde sig frisk. And live longer. Sund og leve længere. But this for the co- it come, came a new report. Men der er kommet en ny efterforskning. Let's say that you only need 4000 steps a day. Som siger man kun har brug for 4000 hey, steps a day. Let's celebrate that one. Yes, lige fejre det. And for an average person. Og for en gennemsnitlig person. 4000 steps. 4000 skridt is 38 minutes. Er 38 minutter. That is a healthy choice. Det er et sundt valg. That some of you som nogen af jer can put in your calendar kan sætte i jeres kalender and make a daily habit out of og gøre til en sund vane. I didn't hear an amen on jeg that one. Jeg ikke lige et amen på den. Okay, let's move on to the happy habit number two. Lad os lige tage glad vane nummer to. Walk and talk with God. Gå og tal med Gud. Matthew 6, Jesus says, I Matteus evangeliet kapitel 6, der siger Jesus, when you pray, når du beder, Go away by yourself. Så so gå afsides. 
Shut the door behind you. Alene og luk døren bag dig. And pray to your father in private. Og bed til din far. You know, in church we often encourage you. Ofte i kirken så opmuntrer vi jer. To find a quiet place. Der finde et roligt sted. Where you can spend time with Jesus. Hvor du kan bruge tid sammen med Jesus. Where you can pray. Hvor du kan bede. Where you can read your Bible. Læs Bibelen. And then I talk with some of you who have small kids. Og så taler jeg med nogle af jer der har små børn. And I realize that if you don't live in a castle, og hvis det så går op for mig, hvis ikke I lever på et slot, you don't have that quiet place at home. Så har du ikke det sted derhjemme. Or maybe you live to get with a roommate. Det kan også være du bor med en roommate who loves rock and roll. Som elsker rock and roll. And it's just difficult to concentrate. Og det er lidt svært at koncentrere sig. Or maybe you just have an issue concentrating. Det kan også godt være du bare har koncentration. Sitting still is really not your thing. Og så stille det er ikke lige dig. But Mikkel, I have a great idea for you. Men Mikkel, jeg har en god idé til dig. You know when we read about Jesus. Når vi læser om Jesus. How he is seeking solitude to be with the Father. Hvordan han søger at være alene sammen med Gud. It said in the scripture over and over again. Så står der igen og igen i Bibelen. That Jesus walked away from the crowd at Jesus gik væk fra forsamlingen to be with his father for where med sin far you can do the same you can go the same you can take a walk you can go in tour you can decide you can beslut jer that a daily habit for me at en daglig vane for dig will be to da- do a daily walk and talk with god er at tage en daglig god tur med gud around my block rundt om boligblokken i will do it every day jeg gør det hver dag and if you're because of physical situation have a hard time walking men hvis du grundet din fysiske situation er udfordret i forhold til gang maybe just walk outside and sit down at the bench så kan det også bare være at du går ud og sætter dig på en bænk and have a talk with god og taler med gud and some of you you could even decide det kan også være at der er nogen af jer der kan beslutte jer for at this fall at her til efterår i will start walking to work så vil jeg begynde at gå på arbejde and then you can make your 4000 steps så kan du også nå din 4000 steps and you can get some time all du kan få noget tid to walk and talk with God. Med at gå og tale sammen med Gud. Or decide if you have a dog. Det kan også være at du har en hund. Bring the dog in the evening. Gå en tur med hunden om aftenen. And when you do your regular tour, og når du går din tur, spend that moment to pray to God. Brug de øjeblikke på at bede til Gud. And if you have a cat, det kan også være at du har en kat. I don't know what you do with that. Jeg ved ikke hvad gør med den. But you will figure something out. Men det finder du ud af. Bring something on a walk. Ha et eller andet med ud at gå. The thing is det der er. You need to make the habit. Du bliver nødt til at etablere vanen. A part of your daily routine. Ud over din daglige rutine som den er nu. A part of your daily routine. Som den er nu. And you need to make it simple. Og du bliver nødt til at gøre den enkel. Part of your daily routine. En del af din daglige rutine. And make it simple. Og gør den enkel. And as much as I. No, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I shouldn't ask how many of you have read your Bible this ja, week. Jeg burde ikke spørge hvor mange af jer som har læst jeres bibel. So I will not ask. Så det spørger jeg ikke om. Because I know I would love for all of you to read it an hour a day. Fordi jeg vil ønske at I alle sammen læste den en time hver dag. But I also know that's not the case. Men det ved jeg også ikke er virkeligheden. Sometimes it's tough to get the concentration. Nogle gange er det svært at koncentrere sig. Get the routine. Få rutinen. That's why I have an easy and healthy habit for you. Det er derfor jeg her har en meget nem. Next time you take a walk, vane, næste gang du går, bring your AirPods. Så so tag din hovedtelefon. Or your headphones. Eller din hovedtelefoner. You can find the audio Bible for free online. Den hvad hedder det lydbog, Bibelen som lydbog er gratis online. And when you take a walk, og når du så går en tur, listen to the gospels. Lyt til evangelierne. Start with the Gospel of Matthew. Du kan begynde i Matteus evangeliet. Listen to the stories about Jesus. Lyt til historierne om Jesus. Because these weeks we talk about transformation. Fordi de her uger der taler vi om forvandling. And we need God's power in our life to transform. Og det har vi brug for Guds kraft. And if you want to know his power, og ønsker du at lære hans kraft at kende, you need to know his word. Så skal du lære hans ord at kende. A simple way to do is en nem måde at gøre det på to listen to it. Er at lytte til det. Okay, next happy habit. Næste glade vane. Give back. Giv det tilbage. It says like this in Hebrews 13. I Hebreerbrevet kapitel 13 der står der sådan her. Don't forget to do good. Glem ikke at gøre godt. And to share with those in need. Og del med dem i nød. 
These are the sacrifices det er de her ofre, that please God. Som gør Gud glad. You know the Bible teaches us. Bibelen lærer os that a life lived in generosity at et gavmildt levet liv is a life filled with meaning. Er et liv fyldt med mening. You don't have everything in your life. I har ikke alt i jeres liv. To keep it to yourself. Så at I kan holde det for jer selv. That is not why it's given to you. Det er ikke derfor det er givet jer. It's given to you. Det er givet til jer. So you can bless others. Så I kan velsigne andre med det. God is the best example. Gud er det bedste eksempel. He gave the best he had. Han gav sit allerbedste. His only son. Sin egen eneste søn. And what can you and I do in return? Og hvad kan vi gøre til gengæld? Well, we can give back. Vi kan give tilbage. And often as a pastor I get the question. Og ofte som præst så bliver jeg stillet det her spørgsmål. What is my purpose in life? Hvad er mit formål i livet? Pastor, how do I find my purpose? Præst, hvordan finder jeg mit formål? And without knowing you, uden at kende dig, all of you, nogen af jer, always the person who asks the questions, eller de, dem der stiller spørgsmålet, my answer is always the same. Så er mit svar uparagtet. You find your purpose. Dit formål finder du. But stop, by stop focusing on you. Ved at stoppe med at fokusere på dig. If you drop, falder du. If you drop me, myself, and I focus. Hvis du dropper mig. Jeg og mig selv and start serving someone else og begynder at tjene en anden and giving generously of what has been given you og gavmil give ud af det du har fået selv you will find purpose så finder du formål if you come to church kommer du til kirke you hear that we ask you to be volunteers in different areas og hører at vi forespørger om frivillighed Right now we need a lot of volunteers in kid church. Lige nu er der et stort fokus i børnekirken. We have too many kids. Vi har alt for mange børn. And too few leaders. Og alt for få ledere. And I think we need you as a volunteer. Og jeg tror vi har brug for jer som frivillige. But you also need the habit. Men du har også brug for den vane. Of on a regular term. At uge ud og uge ind. Serve someone else. Chain nogen andre. We ask you to help out in friends and family. Vi beder jer om at hjælpe i friends and family. With the families in needs on Wednesdays. Med de familier der har en nød her om And we need your hands for that. Og vi har brug for jeres hænder. But til you det. also need environments like that. Men I har også brug for den slags miljøer. Where it's not about you. Hvor det ikke handler om dig. Where it's about serving someone else. Men om at tjene en anden. And in this church. Og her i kirken. We believe in the biblical principle of tithing. Så tror vi på det bibelske princip at give tiende. Many of us in here, mange af os her, have decided to give 10% of our income. Har besluttet at give 10% af vores indkomst. Every month, hver måned, to the church, til kirken. Yes, the church needs money. Ja, kirken har brug for penge. But you also need, men du har også brug for, to find habits of fin vana where you on regular basis hvor du på reel basis teach yourself lære dig selv to be generous og være gavmild with what god has given you med det der er blevet givet dig af gud for some of you this is the habit that you need to start holding on to for nogle af jer der er det den vane i skal holde fast i fremadrettet to give back at give tilbage still awake er i stadig vågen Last habit. Sidste vane. Maybe the most difficult one. Måske den sværeste. Happy habit number four. Glad vane nummer fire. Love like Jesus. Elsk som Jesus. I don't think that I have told you in a while. Jeg tror det er et stykke tid siden jeg har sagt jer. I love you. Jeg elsker jer. I love all of you. Jeg elsker jer alle sammen. I really do. Det gør jeg. You know, the best part of my week, det bedste ved min uge, is to come here on Sundays. Ja, her om søndagen. And before the service and after the service, før gudstjenesten og efter gudstjenesten, I just walk slowly through the foyer. Så går jeg langsomt igennem foyeren. 
and I get the chance to talk with you. Og får muligheden for at tale med jer. That is my highlight of the week. Det er ugens højdepunkt. Because you are for I er great great people. Skønne skønne mennesker. And for these last two years that I've been here, og de sidste to år jeg har været her, I have given this church, så har jeg givet den her kirke my best, mit bedste. I have given everything I have. Jeg har givet alt hvad jeg har haft. And I just want you to know this someday. Og det er vigtigt for mig at I ved i dag. That besides my wifey, at udover min kone, you are the apple of my eye. Så er i min øje sten. I love you. Jeg elsker jer. You are simply the best. You are simply the best. <laughs> and we all know, og vi ved alle sammen, that not all people, at ikke alle mennesker, is as easy to love, er så elskværdige, like you guys, som I er. You have a colleague, I har en kollega, he is hard to love, han er svær at elske. You have a boss, en chef, neighbor, en nabo. How do we then love? Hvordan elsker vi så? Jesus says like this in John 13. Sådan her siger Jesus i Johannes evangeliet kapitel 13. Your love for one another, yes, kærlighed til hinanden, will prove to the world, beviser over for verden, that you are my disciples. At I er mine disciple. But what do I do? Men hvad gør jeg? When I just don't like the guy. <laughs> Når jeg bare ikke bryder mig om vedkommende. Well, you do. Det du gør. What we have been talking about through this series. Det vi har talt om gennem den her With every area where you need help. Med hvilket som helst område hvor du har brug for hjælp. You admit to Jesus. Du indrømmer over for Jesus. That you don't have what it take. At du ikke har det der skal til. And then you ask Jesus. Og så beder du Jesus. To fill you with His love. Om at fylde dig med hans kærlighed. And then you start to pray for the person. Så begynder du at bede for personen. And my experience is. Og min erfaring er. The first person Jesus often start to change. Den person Jesus allerførst er at forandre. Is myself. Er mig. I start to see at that person in another way. Jeg begynder at se vedkommende på en anden måde. I start to see the good things with that person. De gode ting ved dem. Created in the image of God. Skabt i Guds billede. But God can also change that person. Men Gud kan også forandre den person. And let me just tell you we have a society that is so focused on love. Vores samfund er meget fokuseret på kærlighed i dag. But there is no great love. Men der findes ingen større kærlighed. That you will ever find. Som i nogen sinde kommer til. Than in the person Jesus Christ. In i personen Jesus Christ. You can look Christus. everywhere. Du kan se overalt. But the one who loved you first. Men vedkommende der elskede dig først. And loved you most. Og mest. His name is Jesus. Hedder Jesus. And he is this close to you. Og han er der så nær. Not only on Sundays, ikke kun om søndagen, but also at work, men også på arbejde. Also when you meet that neighbor, også når du møder naboen. So just ask him. Så bed ham. God, I cannot love this person on my own. Gud på egen hånd, der kan jeg ikke elske vedkommende. But with your power, men med din kraft, you can change through me. Så kan du igennem mig for andre. Okay, before I stop. Før jeg stopper. Quick summary. Hurtig opsummering. From Daniel. Fra Daniel. We learned the power. Så lærte vi kraften i. Of having one habit. At have én vane. And then we have gone through four happy habits. Og så har vi nu været igennem fire glade vaner. And I think you could decide right now, is there one of these habits? Jeg tror du nu er i stand til at blive klar over, er der en af de her vaner? That I need to put in my life. Så ja bliver nødt til at implementere i mit liv on a daily basis på daglig basis because if you want to change for ønsker du at forandre dig you need to change your habits så skal du forandre for and if you're going to make it over time og skal det ske over tid make it part of your daily routine så gør det en del af din daglige rutine make it simple gør det enkelt and then we do what we do og så gør vi det vi gør we ask jesus vi beder jesus to come with his power og komme med hans kraft and help us to transform og hjælp os med at forvandle os